Okay. What's up? Okay, guys, we're here with uh, Fly Hudson, otherwise known as the lesbian pickup artist. Uh, she's based in, is it LA? Mostly? Yeah, Los Angeles. Okay, yeah, so she's in Los Angeles in the US. Um, I'll just let her talk a little bit about herself so you guys are familiar with what she's working on and who she is and stuff. So go ahead. Yeah, sure. So um, I am a, a P way, or at least I'd like to say I used to be. Um, now, you're, I, now you're a cat, it looks like. From your yeah, shoe. now I'm a cat. Um, but really, <laughs> I've been more focusing on, on um, learning more through doing more art and uh, getting into more artistic kind of focusing more on the artist part rather than the pickup part so what um, what do you mean by that can you explain sure so instead of making like the old infield youtube videos that i did i kind of wanted to do something um a little bit more relatable or um more like storytelling that you know talks about pickup and stuff like that so maybe doing stuff like books or media or doing plays or um you know, making pictures and things that I've been doing in that nature. So, nice. um, yeah, what's focusing on doing art. Yeah. Okay. Do you have like any uh, key projects you want to talk about? Um, other than me writing my second book and um, just, uh, I may be having a modeling show coming up soon, like in LA where I'm going to be having a bunch of my friends who do modeling come in. There's going to be like a little fashion show or something like that. Other than that, um, just photography and usual. Um, I do have a new YouTube channel coming out though, but it doesn't have infields. That's all. Okay. It's, it's great. Yeah, well, what, can you, great can you explain like the, cause I know a lot of guys get confused. I was confused at first too. What, what is like the lesbian pickup artist mean? Like, so you're like. You're, but you're bisexual, right? Sure. And you have yeah. a you have a boyfriend yeah. that's a coach as well. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, is that when I first came into the industry, I was still very influenced by liberalism and feminism and stuff like that. So I actually came in as hetero flexible, and then it was homo flexible, and then I just said, no, I just I like both, but I'm monogamous to one guy, and I just like dating a whole bunch of different girls. That's it. Nice. That's the whole reason why my channel is called the lesbian pickup artist or lesbian stuff because it was just me getting a whole bunch of girls. I wasn't going to approach guys or anything because yeah, yeah. I already had stuff. So that's why. But you and your uh, boyfriend, you would do cold approach together to go just go for threesomes and stuff? Um, we've done that before, but um, we have other things going on. So he has other people that he works with, like other girls and stuff when he flies out that he meets and and does that kind of stuff with. I've kind of faded out from the scene, like I told you, so he has his own. He's still doing, you know, like pickup and stuff, but I'm over here kind of just focusing on more art, and I have to say it's more like social game, I have to say. Um, just getting more into the modeling photography scene and, you know, being a part of that is a lot better than just going online or going to a bar and picking up media members, I guess. That's just, that's my scene, you know. Nice. It seems to be different. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get into more of the, um, like I'm, I'm going to be writing a book, I don't know if you saw that in some of the posts I was writing, I'm going to be writing a book that's going to be put out in like January 2020, just kind of like chronicling the whole pickup journey and what I've seen in the community and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I'm not recording infield, I, 2014 and somewhat in 2016, 2017, I recorded a whole bunch of infield, but I just have like mountains of footage that's not even edited yet, so... There's really no point in recording more of that. But yeah, let's jump into uh, some topics, basically. Is there, you said you wanted to go over, just wing it, but we can just bring up some topics and give our thoughts. Absolutely. There's one that I want to pick your mind about, especially, because um, I've heard some of your uh, stuff that you've talked about. Um, I'm curious about your experience growing up and about how religious your family was and how that <laughs> you know, played a huge part of your life and social development and dating women and stuff like that. Because I think we may, it's all you. Okay, so yeah, I was raised like super Catholic, um, like super Catholic. Like in my household, there was like no swearing allowed. Um, my parents don't drink. They both waited until marriage to have sex. Um, we couldn't even have like The Simpsons. It's like an older show, but when I was growing up, we couldn't even have that on TV because it was too offensive because there was like inappropriate themes and blah, blah, blah. They kind of like put us in a bubble, like a very conservative, uh, strict bubble, which I think backfired <laughs> to some extent. 
But you know, I have to say that too because growing up, I was actually adopted. Um, my mother had me at uh, 18 and gave me up to foster care, so I was adopted by my maternal grandparents. Okay. And um, the, my family was very dysfunctional because my grandfather was actually getting over a heroin addiction. Um, so a lot of our rent money and all of our money and stuff like that was going to fuel, you know, his addiction. That's what he was taking the money to do. And my grandma got laid off and stuff. So they drew very closely to God. Um, before they were a little bit relaxed about it. They were letting me go to dance recitals and stuff like that. And, um, it, it, it's such a weird situation because they were super Christian. I mean, I remember growing up, we had Stephen Curtis Chapman, Rebecca St. James, DC talk. Like I could not go to any movies. All the movies I had to watch, they had to do with animals or they had to do with God. If it was like rush hour two, or I remember Austin powers, um, had come out when I was in elementary middle school, my grandmother was like, that is of the devil. You cannot have that in the house at all. Um, it was just, it was absolutely crazy, but it felt like it was so hypocritical too, because my grandma also wanted to put on Madonna tapes and my grandma was also, um, you know, like, I feel like my family was kind of trying to be a little bit manipulative with the church, I guess, by saying, oh, we're so poor, we're so poor. But like, you know, like my grandfather was like getting involved with like heroin and all this other stuff. But still, they were like, oh, we believe in God. We believe in Jesus. You know, the whole the whole entire thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's I just feel like, you know, after going going through a lot of like thoughts, especially recently, I just feel like religion can be such a horrible tool for people to, you know, I just feel like everything that happens with religious families just absolutely backfires, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, I bought into the whole thing, though. Like, I <clears throat> going into college, and this isn't even a lie, so a lot of guys are like, how did, the, how did you go so opposite direction? Going into college, I had, like, I don't think I'd ever miss church one of the Sundays because we were taught, like, even if you're sick, you go to church. If we're on vacation, we go to church. It's like a huge sin not to go to church. But I had the beliefs, first of all, that all the Catholic and God stuff was completely like 100% true. I didn't really start doubting it heavily till like early college. Um, but I planned on waiting till marriage to have sex. Like when I went into college, I planned on waiting. I hadn't even kissed a girl yet, and I planned on waiting till marriage to have sex. And I also planned on like never having one drink, which also later became a huge problem. <laughs> so like I, I, I was planning on like never trying you know, alcohol, never having a, a sexual encounter until I was with the girl, but you know, the girl that I was going to marry, but that quickly changed <laughs> in college. It, did, it didn't even happen right away. Like my first uh, kiss experience was like the fall of freshman year. And I was like, lit, like physically trembling, which is funny to look back on now. I don't know how many girls I've kissed at this point, but probably over 10,000. <laughs> But it's like, uh, I was physically trembling. The girl was like, oh my God, this is like so adorable, all this shit. Um, and then I lost my virginity like the end of my freshman year of college. But I didn't have my first drink until like my third year of college. Like even the, like the first like year or two, like I had other like shy friends from high school. Cause I was like very introverted and shy in high school. I had other shy friends that started like doing the drinking thing in college. And I would hang out with them and I'd see like them be a totally different person. It was like really like alarming to me that you could have a shy, introverted person just totally become extroverted in the life of the party and all this stuff. And, but it just seemed like, like totally different, like someone that I didn't even know. And I would like yell at them, like, dude, like, I'm not going to be your friend if you're going to drink. Like, it's not healthy. Like, I don't like seeing you act like this, blah, 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 blah. And they finally convinced me to try alcohol at a, at a frat party. And it was like, holy shit, like all the anxiety and shyness and everything just melted. Um, and Drinking has admittedly been like a large component of my success in the game. Like I joke with my friends that are pretty advanced or that have, have been with hundreds of girls. And we're like, dude, like, how many girls would we have been with if we didn't drink when we went out to do night game? It's, it probably would be way lower just because it does like kind of extinguish approach anxiety. It does help your verbals flow, especially if you're a very, very analytical guy who's in your head. Like, just always analyzing and thinking and stuff like I am. Um, and it does kind of like make everything kind of like smoothed out. Like it makes the whole process like flow a lot easier. But over the years, like it's just become like a detriment because 
just going like way overboard with it, and then the, and then it turns your game sloppy and makes you say and do stupid shit and et cetera, et cetera. But um, it is it is funny to look back that um, all that was prohibited and that was never part of the life plan, so to speak. <laughs> why why were you curious about that? It, do you think uh, do you think the religion tied into like ending up in this position or what? I just feel like the more that people, I just like I, I guess I should caution this. Like if anybody ever has kids in the future or whatever, anybody who's listening to this, the last thing that you want to do to make people love God is to force it down their throats and use God as a way to oppress people. Yeah. Like I remember not having any friends, and that really that fucked my development up throughout college. Because now looking back, I'm just like, if I was able to just go out and play, I remember a little girl, like across the street from me when I was five years old or so, came over and said, oh, can I can I go play with Anna, right, She's my real name. And you know, my grandma was like, no, she can't come play. And I was asking my, my grandma why, my grandma was like, oh, you know, because that, you know, that little girl, you know, her family doesn't believe in Jesus or whatever and stuff like that. But it was it was so hypocritical because it was like at home, they didn't even really act Christian. You feel me? Like, yep. it, yeah, it was, know, it was a similar situation in my, in my parents' household. Like, they're, they're nice people deep down and like they don't, they're not like big assholes behind closed doors. But, but there was like incredible amounts of verbal abuse in the home. And my mom was always yelling like all my memories of childhood and even... Even up to the current day, most most of the time, whenever I'm home, she's always yelling, she's insulting. So I took like heavy, heavy, heavy. I was the first child out of four. I took like the brunt of the verbal abuse along with my dad. And then it lessened on each child, but like my sister who's next in line got it pretty bad as well. The younger two are like not as fucked up as we are. <laughs> but they still, you know, like the youngest one, she's like the most normal because my mom like cooled off a bunch by that point and like realized she was being out of control. But yeah, like, that used to really bother me as well. That they would be, you know, the dream family in public. And then as soon as we'd get home from church, it's just like a total war zone. And I, like, she's just screaming at everyone and all this stuff. And so I, I went through a perpetual cycle of, like, getting punished, like, all the time for, like, any any possible thing she could think of. And just constantly being yelled at and insulted. And then when I, whenever I try to stand up for myself about such and such punishment being unjust, they would take away more stuff. And so I, I just was always always in these situations where like I'm in my room, like I can't go out and see my friends. I like start reading a book or something, she comes in and takes the books. I try to use the computer, she takes the keyboard away. And then if I protest, it takes away for more weeks and more weeks. So it's just kind of like this like endless frustration where I know what they did was unjust, but I can't really protest against it. And then she would just like stand outside the door and name call and insult. And like, we were going to family counseling at one point, and I remember I, they, he told me to write down a list of like every insult, and it was like three columns, double sided, like ten pages in like a week or something like that. And it was, I like brought that in, and he was like, "Oh my god, like, I've never seen anything like this." And <clears throat> that kind of just that repeated abuse that kind of like turned me into this lifestyle, I think, because. She just like stripped away so much of the um, self-esteem and the validation that most people would have in a normal, healthy family. And then a lot of the a lot of the people that turn into pickup artists, coaches, have similar stories where like they just were shit all over by their parents, and they in their adult life just go on this like conquest to fuck lots of women and stuff, which isn't necessarily healthy. But I'm thankful for it in a way because. I was able to innovate and make a lot of progress in the field. And I don't think I would have had the drive to do so otherwise. And then, like, I w it was kind of like the perfect storm because then I have, like, this whole nerdy analytical side. So I, like, fuse that with the motivation from the verbal abuse. And you have modern-day j Mulf. <laughs> About to hit a thousand, fuck a thousand girls. Which is, like, infathomable. Like, <clears throat> I remember, like, that's, it's kind of an interesting concept that's related um, like lay count sounding like a relative term. Like when I w had been with three girls, I was really into this girl in my college who had been with nine people and I just couldn't get over how, how someone could sleep with nine people. And then I met a guy that had been with like 26 people and I was like, teach me everything like this. I, I don't think like anybody is, like ever comes close to that, blah, blah, blah. 
And then like when I first thought about fucking a hundred girls, I remember I was talking to my roommate at the time and I was like, dude, can you imagine if we fucked triple digits like a hundred girls? He's like, yeah, it's impossible. Never gonna happen. I was like, yeah, but it would be a cool life goal. And now that's like a bad year, <laughs> like a hundred, not to, <clears throat> I always have to like caveat, like it's not objectifying, but. <clears throat> have, you ever thought, have you ever thought about leaving? Um, cause I don't know how your experience was in high school or college, but have you ever just felt like going to like homecoming or, you know, <laughs> high school union and just, you know, looking at all the people who used to be the chads and now they're like the chumps and you know more about women than they do, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, I don't really, I, I see a lot of those people on, on Facebook and stuff like posting most of them like married someone from high school or college, stayed in their yeah. home, stayed in their hometown. And then they're just posting pics of their kids all the time. So it's like, I don't know, that, that life is definitely not for me. Like I, I'd much prefer to travel. And to me, like it, it's like the death of freedom to, to have a child and then be stuck in one area. And then you're just like stagnating and you're working a dead end job. Like um, I haven't really had to work a real job in about five years. I've just bounced from different parts of the world and just meeting new people and new cultures and new um, experiences, new friends, like all these like amazing girls throughout the journey. Um, that's much more fulfilling to me personally, but I have, what's cool is I, when I was living in Las Vegas, I met like the most popular kid that was in my high school. Like I met, I ran into him when we were out and he, he was like the star point guard in high school. He claims to have slept with 150 girls in high school, which might be true. He was, he was, he was like that, he was like that popular, but like contrast to, I hadn't even kissed a girl in high school. So he's like the star point guard. He just had them like falling to his lap. And he's like a good looking guy, like pretty well built, tall, all this stuff. And I ran into him in Vegas. He was playing like professional poker. He wasn't like making a crush. He wasn't crushing or anything. He wasn't making a really crazy living, but he was doing well enough. <clears throat> and he basically was like, dude, after high school, I lost all that like popularity and, and like girls used to just fall into my lap in high school. He's like, after I left high school, like I didn't have that reputation anymore as like the star athlete and all this stuff. And he's like, I still get girls, but it's like a lot harder for me now. And what he's like the perfect example of a natural. So we started going out together, which is funny because he was like the most popular guy. And I was like probably one of the least popular guys out of like 700 people. And he didn't have any fundamental understanding of like logistics or like, uh, like setting things up to make it happen. Like he was just really good at vibing. So like he'd come in, he was the perfect wingman because he would come in and the, like he could carry a conversation, all this stuff, but I would direct all the stuff towards framing things. Like we're going to go hang out at our place now, or we're going to go, we're all going to meet at this time, blah, blah, blah. So I taught him like the key things that he just didn't know as a natural. Um, <clears throat> but it's, it's interesting because you take him out of his, um, you know, big popularity thing and he has to start from scratch. It's, you know, like I said in a different video, like Jonah Hill, my friend, my friend's friend was on set with Jonah Hill and he was like overweight at that time and just had models coming out of the trip in and out of the trailer. But you put Jonah Hill in a country where no one knows who, who he is <clears throat> and he's gonna have to do some serious work on himself. So, <laughs> um, I guess the point is, uh, like the pickup stuff is important. Like the principles are important. Um, but yeah, in terms of, going back to interact with those people from high school. I don't know. I, I, some of them have caught wind of what I've been up to. You know, it's just very socially un unacceptable and out of, out of most people's realities to go on this like worldwide pilgrimage, banging a thousand girls <laughs> when they're changing. Well, it's not like you're going to your high school reunion to bang any of those old broads. <laughs> so like, I, I would, I would go and I would flaunt all of my fucking I, I have I have had some of those like redemption bangs where like I've met um, girls. Give you something to write about for your book if you do it. Yeah, no, I have I have had some of those where like there was like the popular girl or whatever, and like I'm able to take her on a date when I'm home for Christmas or something because I'm now able to like speak with her. Um, yeah, it's it's totally different. Like when I was when I was in high school, I was like really 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 terrified to like even have like a friendly conversation with a girl. Like if I would like bump a girl I liked or something like that in a classroom or in, or in the hallway or whatever, I would just be like super nervous. I was having <clears throat> like tons of anxiety problems in high school. Like I was having regular panic attacks. And I, I was diagnosed with general anxiety and social anxiety. 
And it got so bad that sometimes it was like hard for me to even leave the house to go to school or like I was playing on sports teams and stuff and it was hard for me to like go to sports practices. And just like times of like tests or holidays or anything that induced extra stress, it was like really, really difficult for me to cope. And like the, the total war at home was, you know, just nonstop stress on top of everything else. So, um, but I, was, I also was like super, super moral at this point. Like I remember I had an opportunity to kiss, I had like my first kiss and it was like my cousin's really hot friend and we were like playing truth or dare in the woods. And I got dared to make out with this girl, but she had a boyfriend and she's like, I don't care. He won't know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's wrong. And then like, I like told the dude and stuff, <clears throat> which is probably not how it would play out these days, but <clears throat> I don't know. I, I do want to somewhat return to that. I think I had better character back then, even though it was like the other extreme and, but I was more engaged in like philosophical and scientific pursuits and like Deep down, like, I still am, like, this dude that was in, like, chess club and math club and played the violin and all this stuff. And I've built up this whole kind of pickup persona and alter ego and stuff that is really, you know, there's, deep down, there's the real essence of myself is, is this nerdy analyzer guy. So I've been trying to, like, reconnect lately. As I, like, come up on a thousand, like, okay, I kind of want to return to... to hang out with intellectual people and, you know, not just spending lots of time in clubs. Like I'm spending <clears throat> a lot of weekends with uh, girls that I'm seeing instead of just like running around, you know, mass approaching the club and stuff like that. So <clears throat> I don't know where to go from there. Did you have other <laughs> thoughts? Well, um, have you, have you thought about, um, you know, if you're into like, you know, science and chess, have you thought about reconnecting with those interests? Like taking, you know, trips out, maybe taking some of the girls, like, you know, the ones that you've really liked, go on trips to museums or something with you? Or, you know, anything like that? Yeah. I mean, I've been I've been attending uh, some, like, the, the, the Warsaw, um, I'm in Poland right now, and they have, like, uh, different science talks about artificial intelligence and different conferences and symposiums connected with the university and stuff like that. So I've been attending those and connecting with people that are more into, you know, higher thinking type stuff. I mean, as much as I love the pickup stuff and it's kind of consumed my life the past 10 years or so, I still have like heavy interests in science and philosophy and artificial intelligence and a lot of stuff with health lately too, with, you know, genomics research and microbiology and life extension therapies and blah 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 so <clears throat> I think there's going to be like a, a pretty big shift it's already started where I'm like taking all the you know confidence and charisma and whatever skills I developed from the pickup life and kind of rebalancing everything I feel like I'm, I'm back on five days a week with the gym for the past month and doing the regular kickboxing um, I cut drinking out um, just just any kind of like degenerate or lazy behaviors or unproductive behaviors I'm trying to replace those with productive and, and meaningful things so I'm like I'm doing meditation now I'm doing like um, really healthy eating like I have a maid keeping my whole living space really clean um, it's not when I tell people this stuff it sounds like I'm I become like all like Buddhist monk like boring green path type thing it's not really like that I'm still doing the fun stuff from before but there's not, <clears throat> I think, I think like a lot of the pickup world can easily be sucked into this like five or six nights out a week patrolling the clubs and patrolling the bars at like the expense of a lot of other stuff in their life or, you know, even patrolling like the, the malls and stuff for three or four or five hours or the parks and just doing like these endless approaches. Like, I think if guys just figured out how to run their game more optimally and more effectively, they wouldn't have to do this like extreme <clears throat> time devotion to making shit work. Um, like I, I much prefer like online stuff these days because it's a lot less effort and a lot less work and you can still go on the dates and see if you have the chemistry and stuff like that. But these like super extended night game sessions, I think I'm, I'm like starting to like get over that. Before I used to not be able to skip Fridays, Saturdays, or even Thursdays because I felt like I was missing out on all these hot girls to talk to. 
but that's kind of changed over the past year or two where, where it's like I could have a much nicer night, you know, doing something cool with, with someone I care about or, or learning something than being out all night and then like feeling like shit the whole next day and blah, blah, blah. The thing that gets me is that as I've um, developed throughout life, um, I don't know if it's just me, but since I've been chasing more things like modeling and photography and stuff like that, like you meet a whole bunch of people, like I've met a whole bunch of girls, but my preferences online, I think maybe you guys at home, maybe you may want to make like a girl profile and go to what like girl swiping on only girls look like, but I find myself swiping like left a lot. I find that if people don't, have the exact kind of like look or if they don't have like for example like I like girls who put on makeup right yep and if there's a girl out there who does not have makeup on in her on her picture and she still looks cute like I'll swipe but if she just doesn't have any on and she's not interested in you know like learning how to do makeup learning how to do like art or photography or something I'm just not I'm not interested in that and I know, like, a lot of people have, you know, like, used to say stuff like, oh, like, you know, are you going to try to pick me up? Like, who are you going to pick up? Like, oh, you haven't been posting any videos. Are you just, like, is it hard for you to get girls? Are you not wanted anymore? Like, you know, people just being people. And I'm just like, no, it's because since I've been engaging more in my passions and my interests and stuff like that, I would rather go and do something more than I would just to hook up with some mediocre bitch. You feel me? <laughs> like, yeah. like, like either she or not. And I mean, like conventionally, like as in, like you guys would look at a picture and you guys would laugh your ass off. That's what I'm talking about by conventionally. You would think she was hot, and or like we would have something like super in common. And even then, I would still be trying to do her hair, makeup, get her in front of my camera just to like post her photos, modeling anything. Yeah, no, yeah, I found that as well. Where it's, you've just had enough of those like mediocre dates or whatever, where you're just like, "fuck," like the it's just gonna. I'm I'm just gonna like regret this later. It's gonna be a waste of my time. Like if well, yeah, I don't know because before I was just like, well, you know, like like they were they were kind of hot, but it's just like it was like it was like at like you know what I mean? It was just like I can manage, and it was like a lot of I can manage people were like, okay, like those were the ones that were gonna fill my number photo when I was focusing more on numbers, you know, <laughs> skip so I was like, okay, like, you know, like, she, she has a cute face, but, you know, like, her butt's kind of like, all right, like, I don't need to be so judgmental, because obviously, like, I'm not perfect at all, but the thing is, is that I can tell who's putting in work yeah. when it comes to their thing, and then there's just girls who just aren't, and they think they can get away with it, and I'm just like, no, and I don't think any man should have to put up with that shit either. Yeah, no, I've I've found like as time has gone on, there's been like uh, less tolerance for just like personality defects too. So if if the chick like starts trying to play any kind of games or is like ignores texts like a couple times in a row, or is just like kind of giving attitude or, or something like that, <clears throat> I'll just be like, I'll, I'll just I'll just cancel a date and be like I'm not interested anymore. Or, yeah, I'm, I'm like very before it was like okay I'll let, I'll put up with this stuff because it's better to put up with it so I can still like get the meetup or whatever. But now it's, there's like very little tolerance for that kind of stuff. And it's, it's better too. Like you don't have like, you, by being really selective like that, you don't have to inter interact with shitty people and, and bring them into your life. Cause it, you know, even if, even if you do end up banging that chick and then you, she becomes a regular part of your life, like she's just going to be like an annoying regular part of your life. If there's like some shitty thing, red flag that you ignored. So or even with regulars, I'm seeing like if they, if they start like, putting on all this attitude or, 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 you know, canceling meetings all the time or whatever that may be. I just tell them like, all right, you know, that's it. And it's much, it's much easier that way. Cause there's all kinds of other cool shit to do. And you don't really need people like that anyways. Plus you can see the, the good ones even more. That's the, yeah. that's the other thing is like, I used to like cancel on the good ones to see like new shitty ones. And then you're like, what, why the fuck did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Or to like go do a six or seven hour night game session <clears throat> when I could have had an awesome night or done some awesome activity with this one that I already know I have good sex with or have good chemistry with. So, and especially as I'm, I'm coming up on like the big milestone of the thousand, it's like, I think once that hits, like it, hopefully I get rid of this whole lay count thing. I mean, I, I, I don't, 
I don't always just go for numbers. It's like uh, a lot of guys mistakenly assume that just because it's so high. But I do oftentimes cancel uh, new date opportunities just to see rotation girls. And like I pass up on going out to do other stuff. That, that kind of stuff happens all the time. Um, if you're doing like any kind of decent volume, not even extreme volume, and you have like the skills, like the, lots of closes just come in. That's what I try to tell guys in my videos. But um, I think after hitting that milestone, it's going to be even more balanced. It's going to be no pressure at all to go for like a new close or whatever, which could be a bad thing. But <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. So. Yeah, tying up all that, that family stuff. I, th I think a lot of guys in the community in general have like have like this pain, like like from all the clients that I've seen over the over the years and just the different conferences and stuff I talked at. It seems like lots of guys had some sort of bad childhood or some sort of like social misfit stuff going on, and a lot of the guys don't even don't even just want like a good quality girl. They want to like fit in. They want to have like this like camaraderie with other guys. They wanna, ha they wanna have like uh, somewhere where they belong. And I think a lot of guys that are socially awkward and introverted and you know, maybe towards the, the lower social tiers of life kind of find like solace in these forums. And a lot of them don't e aren't even like going out or whatever. They just like, like to talk about pickup with other guys and hang out with other pickup guys, which is kind of funny, but. Did you have? Well, yeah, go ahead. I definitely see it. You know, I, I have to say that if you basically have been like, you know, like punched up or shat on, like this is the industry for you. <laughs> I have to say that because I know a lot of people, and they're like, <laughs> I know some people like just looking at it, you know, because I've talked to some people about it before. Because I've, um, I've like just like talked to, you know, like some naturals or like whoever, and it's like some of the concepts just don't they don't get it, like, because they've never been in a place, like, it's for some people, like, especially those who have been bullied, like, it's easy for me to tell them, hey, like, that girl's feeling uncomfortable when you do that, try to do this differently, it's easy for them to adjust, because they've been in a place where they have felt uncomfortable, or they've been in a place where, you know, people have made them feel a little bit, you know, like, made them feel vulnerable, so it's easy for them to adjust their behaviors, rather than somebody who's just, like, hey, like, I've had everything handed to me my whole life, you know, because when you're in pickup, you deal with, like, all kinds of people, not just people who, you know, are just interested in going into pickup, but just regular, everyday people, and even, you know, really privileged people, you know, like, people who are billionaires and millionaires, like, they still have, they still have, like, social issues, and they could have, like, a whole bunch of friends and never get laid, and, you know, yeah, that's, so, that's why, they, know, yeah, I was going to say about the millionaire people, like I know a bunch of rich guys in the internet marketing world that say like, I can buy anything I want with my money, but like to have a girl genuinely like them, you know, because they can pay for hookers too, but to have a girl genuinely like them, like a hot girl genuinely like, you know, swooning over them and all that shit, it's like something that money can't buy. And a lot of them are completely missing that from their life. And it, it arguably is one of the most important things to make you happy to have that ability to attract hot girls. Right, because they can they can buy like fast cars and all this shit, and they they go to try to talk to a hot girl, and the girl just pushes them aside like a piece of dirt, and they know deep down like they can't get a girl like that unless they're like a sugar daddy or unless they're, I mean even then she's not genuinely into them, she's just using them, so yeah I mean this is arguably one of the most important skill sets to have, and I'm actually uh, making an adjustment to go after those kinds of clients. The white collar workers that are making six figures, the um, CEOs, entrepreneurs, um, internet marketers, crypto guys, guys that have a lot of money. So I knew, my new program offering, it's actually going to be uh, $15,000 for a 10 day program with like five coaches. And it's going <clears> to, <throat> we've been working out the, the syllabus and the schedule and everything. It's going to cover like everything across the spectrum to optimize your life and your happiness and your value as a man. Pickup will still be a large focus, but there's going to be a great deal more that's often left out of the whole picture. And 
Um, now, is there also going to be more focus on, um, because it's going to be a lot different, I feel, than teaching somebody who would be like, you know, me. So, for, for example, um, for people that are billionaires and millionaires, they may be able to get more quality of women, like, because women are going to be like, oh, you know, he's got a car, he's got a whatever. But are you going to be able, I'm sure you do, but do you have a program in set which helps them, uh, like, shit test or be able to screen out? people who are using them for money and people who generally like them? Um, so, no, we haven't, because, we haven't thought of that. That's a good idea, though. No? Yeah, we haven't, we haven't thought of that. But a lot of them already do. Like, a lot of the rich guys I know already can, can spot that because, uh, because pretty much everyone's trying to use them. <laughs> like, just, just from, from my, my personal experience, a lot of them have, have openly talked about that stuff. Like, their real friends versus, um, you know, people that are just using it. I think I think a lot of them have that intuition, but yeah, in terms of like the signs that come from girls, that's that's a good idea. We can probably uh, go over that. Believe it or not, it actually wasn't until I started getting into pickup that I started to recognize when people were using me or manipulating me. Because before, people that I thought were nice to me, I thought I thought they were fake. Yeah. You know me. So I feel like there there may you may want to, but I'm sure you already have something. Mind, you know? well, there's a there's a lot more of that stuff like, like in the in the LA world the LA scene there's a lot more of people all like jockeying for status and money and all that stuff right um, yeah I believe so well I don't I don't actually leave my house really um, I just I so I don't know too much about LA people I okay. only know about about them through uh, through whoever I work with and then that's it I've, um, I've been to some I, Hollywood Hills parties and, and everyone's just like I'm a actress i'm a rapper i'm a musician like all this stuff but you know but they're all like trying to be they're all like trying to make it but everyone's just like kind of fronting and then everyone's like trying to like throw like name drop like i know this guy or i've been to this party or i'm part of this social circle or that social circle and like tons of people have money and like the girl a lot of the girls like don't even want to like devote time to you unless you're like throwing money around like there's all kinds of i didn't like that there's just all kinds of yeah. like oh shit I don't like that scene either because because the thing is is that the more uh, the more that you try to fit in with a whole bunch of rich people who don't give a shit about you other than your name, the more miserable you're going to be because you're going to realize there's not going to be anybody who's truly there for you. Yeah. And it only takes one little stumble to fall, right? So like when Roseanne, for example, did that tweet, I'm sure you've heard about that in the media, you know, it, it only took like one little thing for her to lose her entire show. And then she did an interview with Joe Rogan. She basically lost, like, she had her money, but she lost everything. Nobody wanted to be around her, anything. It just takes, once you get to some sort of level at the top, one little thing, one wrong association, one wrong thing can just completely knock you down. That's why I was just like, yeah, it would be nice to, like, have, like, a lot of subscribers and do all this stuff, but I would never want to be caught up in a fake crowd because then if I do... Then I spend my time doing what I did in, in pickup for a while, trying to validate myself to a whole bunch of people who don't really give a shit. They just want to, you know, learn and, and take things in. So, it'd be, you know, like that 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 scares me so much because you learn you learn a lot. So. Yeah, that's why from all the all the places I travel around the world, that's why I'm kind of like settling now in Eastern Europe, just because I feel like the people here are a lot more <clears throat> like humble. A lot of them. Like had parents had to struggle to make a living, and like the, they earn a lot less. People like um, aren't as like consumed by greed and capitalism and all this other shit. People are just more focused on like the the simple things that make people happy. They're very Christian out there, though, aren't they? Um, officially, right? it's mostly right. on the, it's mostly on the surface. It's like it's like the you know, like the you know the whole like Nietzsche like God is dead thing. Like uh, a lot of people in, in modern Europe are. Like, on paper, Christian, but are living as if they're atheists. So I've I've asked I've asked around a lot of, a lot of the people. The the reason why they get that reputation and why that's like the official position is that like the Catholic Church is very um, influential, like on the governments. And so, like for instance, like abortion is illegal in Poland, which is insane. And it's also when I was living in Colombia, it was illegal there too. But even if you're using protection, like condoms can break the. <clears throat> It can fall off, like the, the girl can take her pill wrong, any number of scenarios, and they aren't allowed to abort it, which is, that, that comes from the church. And same with like um, homosexuality, that they really have to kind of keep that 
um, the, the people that are homosexual have to kind of keep it under wraps is what I've heard because it's like openly discriminated against but that's coming from the church doctrines and stuff like that so and the church is extremely corrupt too like there's this movie that's really popular in Poland right now that I, I recently saw and it's chronicling like you know priests being drunk and like raping the little boys and like uh, stealing money from people and misappropriating funds for their own benefit and on and on and on all under the guise and the, the protective veil of this is for God and you know so <clears throat> Do you like do you like it there so far? Do you like living Oh yeah I, yeah I love it um, just like just looking at like the women for example because that's like a, a big thing I consider um, in general just from all my experience in, in the US and in other countries and stuff in general the girls here are much more like feminine and sweet elegant um, there's not like these power struggles where they're where they're trying to like be in charge and it, that doesn't mean like the man's always in charge but there's not to justify it the US is yeah. fucking disgusting yeah comes to women so yeah but there's not there's like there's like hardly any games or power struggling there's like almost never flaking or like just playing bullshit over text like which is like non-stop from my experience in the US um, like the girls aren't they, they seem like a lot more like they have like more values in terms of like uh, I'm not saying that cheating doesn't go on or I don't even know what the statistics are for cheating in different countries but they just seem like more like loyal and more respectful and just like just more like sweet like I guess it's I guess it's not what it should be yeah that's what you found in the country yeah there's no problem with that and, and, it, and it's it's the same from like anyone anyone that I know that's American that comes here they have the same like shocking night and day realization or even people from other western cultures like I'm friends with this guy he, he's from Australia and he's like mate like he's like it's totally different like in, in Australia it's like this and this I'm like yeah that's how it is in the states so I think like places and it's, it's not like every person is ruined but places like the US and Canada and New Zealand and Australia and western Europe are all kind of victim to this um, media and and movies shit kind of like eroding the culture like um you know if, if young girls role model role model is like uh kim kardashian or cardi b it's like and it, the thing is too like i remember when i was in america and i was like in the, ch the chess club and the math league and all that stuff and playing the violin once girls like started developing like tits and like going through puberty or whatever and becoming like attractive the pretty ones like stop doing all those activities like because it was no longer cool to do math like competitively <laughs> it's funny even saying that it's, but it's no longer cool to like uh be playing a violin or something so they, they they dropped off but the less attractive girls stayed in so and and that like the the pretty ones they started hanging out with like the athletes because that's like what they were taught to do and they start it's cool to skip class it's cool to like not really pursue anything academically like have as many free periods as you can and blah 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 and in Europe it's like they think like intellectualism and intelligence and stuff is cool like a lot of the girls that I meet here they have uh, lots of degrees and they speak like three four or five languages and they know which is embarrassing to, to me because I consider myself pretty smart they know a lot more about like even US politics than I do or like global situations and, and like um uh, all, across the whole board of knowledge like they're very well informed about all kinds of stuff like <clears throat> I, I feel like I can bring up any kind of like scientific topic and lots of times the girls will be familiar with it whereas in the US that was almost never the case and they didn't even want to talk about stuff like that and would look at me strange if I wanted to talk about stuff like that so <laughs> like in Europe like a lot of these girls will just start talking about stuff like that so it's really it's really kind of refreshing um, and it, again it, these are just broad observations from I, I agree because I think that like I I've, I've always had this kind of theory and it might be a, a really unpopular opinion or so but I always thought that it would have been great if when they separated men and women for health class or whatever that they had classes or programs which taught women how to be more like women and men how to be more like men like yeah. men you know, we're able to get together and they learned, you know, how to play sports, how to, how to hunt, how to fire a gun to protect themselves, right? If an intruder comes in the house, you know, for women, like, 
um, you know, even just learning about makeup, right? Like being in the in the modeling photography industry. When I looked at it as, oh, it's, you know, like something that, like, you know, like some stupid classless ho would wear, you know, let's be, like, ghetto, let's take dick all the time, let's drink, <laughs> crack, or whatever it was. Yeah. I was not interested in doing that. Yeah. But when I started going to classes uh, recently, I went uh, to one in Sephora, it, it was it was framed in a way that was made to be intelligent. They were like, okay, we're going to learn about the smoky eye. And about the smoky eye, it happened back in the 80s when um, when Steve McQueen was on and everybody, and they just wanted to put colors on. And they made it actually seem like, oh, it was like a historical experience. You learned about education. The girls there, you know, they were very nice. And it was like the, the instructors were professional. And everybody was talking about, like, a lot of intelligent things. Um, I believe... My instructor was also like a like a biochem teacher yeah. and stuff like that. So when if they made it so that way classes right how to cook, how to sew, how to put on makeup, how to maybe iron a dress, how to make a dress, how to do any of that. If that was put in more of like an educational frame, a lot like with the curriculum or whatever, I just feel like that would have just been so good for you know, American women here. But instead, we're doing the opposite, right? We're saying, oh, okay, like maybe men should go to the makeup classes and the women should go to the hunting classes, you know? It's just yeah. all... Yeah, it's the, whole, it's the notion of the androgyny of species. Like the, the men are becoming emasculated, the women are becoming more masculine. So, yeah, like, yeah, you, you look around at like the, the modern man and like a lot of them are just total like pushover, pussy, like they weren't taught to work with tools or, you know, do manly type stuff. <clears throat> and a lot of the women are, because of like feminism and these other movements are, you know, trying to become like men, you know, so you just have like, instead of the, like, that's what I mean about in Europe, that there's still like that nice separation. Not to say that the men aren't pussies here in, in a bunch of ways, <laughs> but the women are at least more like elegant and feminine. So you don't, you don't have like this gap being closed. Whereas in the U S like a Arguably, a lot, a lot of the chicks are more masculine than a lot of the, like the, the most pussified beta dudes. <laughs> and and that, those guys are fucked. Like, I'm always saying in my videos, like, no, no amount of pickup strategy and tactics, and outer game uh, strategy and moves and all that stuff can fix. Like, if you're a beta guy or you're a pushover guy or you're a low value guy or a girl's view you as a pussy. Like, when I gave my talk in Sopot, there was like 300 guys and I said... Raise your hand if, if you would consider yourself a pussy. And I kind of had to like prod a little bit and be like, don't worry, we're not going to judge you. Like, put your hand up. Like, just be honest with yourself. And that brought up some more hands. But still, a, lot, a, a bunch of the audience like wouldn't admit it. And, and I was like, just from looking out across you guys, I can see that most of you are. And that's why, like, that's why you're like at this conference to begin with. But a lot of your success isn't because your game strategy is incorrect it's because the girl sizes you up in like one or two seconds and she's like this guy is a loser this guy's low value whatever and i've even played the game with girls where we're walking around the mall or something or we're just sitting there eating and it's a binary thing like is that guy a pussy or not you don't even really usually need to even hear them speak just the way he's carrying himself or the, the way the way he looks his body language etc and they pick like almost 100% of the time, like what I would consider to be a pussy guy too. Like you can just size someone up, like boom. And <clears throat> that can be fixed. Like they can, they can go to the gym, they can fix their style, they can fix the way they carry themselves, the way they let people treat them, et cetera, et cetera. The way that, you know, the way, what they bring, the energy and the presence they bring. But guys don't really focus on that stuff. And a lot of that's forgotten in the pickup world. So you have, this is perpetual problem you know, it's like, it's like if you were trying to teach like a guy in a wheelchair how to pole vault or something like <laughs> you can't, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. Like they, they need to spend less time on the forums and more time working on themselves. So I'm, I'm trying to help uh, bring, bring that realization back to guys. And on that 10 day program, we're really going to focus on that, you know, like becoming the alpha guy that, that you want to be. And a lot of my videos are starting to be more geared towards that too. It's like, you need to come with the full package. Like I just put out a video last night on like grooming and hygiene about, you know, just like shaving your pubes and like all this other shit, like making sure you don't have BO and wrinkled clothes and that your house, you don't have like piss and shit, like all of your toilets and stuff when the girls over your house. <laughs> 
like all these, all these basic things, but but guys need to hear that stuff so they can kind of make sure the fundamentals are in place for them to build this uh, this strategy pickup strategy on top of instead of doing it the other way yeah, around. Yeah, and it's nothing to be ashamed of too, because a lot of people I know they might be like, wow, like I must be like really an animal if I don't know how to do that and stuff like that. But you know, um, taking care of yourself and finding your own personal style and stuff like that, you know. Um, it, 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 like having like an exceptional, like an exceptional effort actually takes a lot of time. Yeah. So I remember like when I first started out, like, like even like when I graduated from, from high school, like my family was so like, like closed in on me that they didn't actually allow me to, to really explore different things, like finding my own personal style. I mean, they didn't even teach me how to do my own laundry. I had to, I was so embarrassed. I had to ask my own roommate. No, it was, it was the same. It's, I think it goes along with that conservatism. It's like, uh, they leave out a lot of the basic shit. Like I hadn't even like tried any like foods outside of staple rice, chicken, broccoli, and like noodles, like, like pasta. Like it was, yeah. it was like, that was all conservative too. So I, I had to like break into like the world of like trying foods, which was scary. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I remember my first time using uh, chopsticks. Like I was, I was, I was doing the stab thing. You know. Oh yeah. Like I, I didn't know, I didn't know how to do anything. Yeah, that was me too. I was in my first corporate job. Like I, we'd go out to a sushi place. I never tried sushi, so I'm ordering like the teriyaki chicken and rice and eating with a fork, and everyone's eating sushi with chopsticks. And that that goes to show it's like this conservative upbringing in life. It's, I mean it. They think they think they're like shielding you from the from the world, whether it be to trying new foods, to hearing swear words on TV or whatever. But people that were kind of like left to roam free and make their own mistakes, and that parents that were more liberal and, and uh, relaxed with the rules, those people usually turned out a lot better. Yeah. I think what matters too is that there has to be a balance between nurturing the child and giving them a sense of independence. Because if you're too closed in, then they rebel and then they go shitty. But if you're too like, okay, yeah, it's okay if you fail, yeah, it's okay to skip school, then you know they're they're not going to do well either. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like there has to be a really good balance. So, um, are you ever planning on having kids in the future, like ever? Like even if you're 60, settle down with like a hot, I don't know, like a hot 20 year old and just um, yeah, child. I don't think yeah. so. I don't think so. I, I've, I've gone back and forth a few times, but the main reason, well, there's, there's a couple, and some of this is like out there for most people. I, I firmly believe that super intelligent machines are gonna drastically alter the world in like 10 to 15 yeah. years due to yeah. double exponential uh, technology increase and so I think like all the paradigms of like the familial unit and like um, you know working till 65 to retire and even retirement savings with that all those things are going to drastically change because we're going to have nanotechnology clearing our arteries of plaque and extending our uh, cognitive abilities and you know we're going to be coming increasingly uh, non-biological because we're going to have all these non-biological and computational things that are interfacing with our biological pieces as we co-evolve with machines. And we're going to be spending a lot of our time in virtual worlds and stuff like that. And even if all that wasn't coming, which, which very supportedly empirically it is, um, I still think the, the life cycle is, the, the child is basically like the equivalent of like an animal for like the first three years or whatever before it's like speaking. And you're just basically like feeding it and cleaning up shit, so to speak. And, and then you're kind of like, you know, teaching it, blah, 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 but then it starts to, like, resent you and hate you, and there's this whole, like, arguing phase. Why would you think that a child would hate well, you? Well, just like that, well, I mean, like, the whole rebellion that, that lots of children go through with, like, the teenage years where there's, like, all this, like, clashing with rules as a parent and stuff like that, and then, you know, and then they like, kind of move away, and you, like, you kind of, like, make up as adults and, and kind of, like, be friends again, but it just, it, just, it just seems like a whole load of bullshit, even though it's even if you have like a son, like a little you, you want it to be just like you and learn pick up or, you know, meet new people or, you know, I don't know. It's just something I'm always just always curious about asking people stuff. So. I, I just think um, the world the world's going to change like so quickly and so fast. I, I think even if... It, even if I was considering about having one like this year or something, it would just be too much of like a, a tie down. Like it, anyone I know that's ever had a kid, like it just takes over your life. Like you can't, 
really do a lot anymore. Like it just impacts everything. Like you're just, your kid is like your, your number one priority and your number one uh, focus and like everything else comes next. So I don't really want to like introduce that into my life where I, all of a sudden I have this like way more important uh, thing to deal with all the time. Like I can't just get up and travel anywhere. I can't just get up and rip them out of school and move somewhere or like whatever. Plus, I don't really like the idea of being with one woman long term either, which yeah. would also be a part of the deal. So you and can it, always just cut hair on or something like that, right? If then that's like a lot of kids to take care of. <laughs> well, see, like, and then it goes into like you're fucking the kid's life up. Like if, you, if like I know the odds of me staying with one girl for a long time are really low. So, and it, what's interesting too, I, I talked about this on my video on my channel about marriage. Um, like I have an uncle. Who, who had been with tons of girls. Like he, he didn't keep track, but he was like a super good natural. I learned lots of amazing stuff from him. And he said that when you get married, like all your power goes out the window, not just from the like US contract to marriage where the woman can take half your shit and blah, blah, blah. But also like, he said his wife just like drinks soda all the time and eats donuts and candy and cake, or whatever, and like put on a bunch of weight. And he says like, why don't you eat more healthy food and stuff like that? And she's like, fuck you, what are you gonna do about it? And they have a child and he said like, if he, you know, if he tries to like put his foot down, not just about that, but about anything, like like she's like way bitchier than when they used to date, like for like not a lot of good reasons, et cetera, et cetera. But he's like you, he's like when you're, he's like when we were dating, we didn't have that official contract. Like if she knew if she went and ate all that crap or just like was really mean to me all the time that I would leave her. So he, he's like I had leverage, and not just those two, but but across the board, like just you you. That's also the thing that always gets me is that I think women, um, the mindset is that now that you're married, it's okay to get fat. It's okay to let these things happen to you. But I don't understand why women don't realize that a tr that looking attractive or being attractive is not just important for your husband or for your loved one, but no. also for the people that he interacts with. No. If you go down the street and say, oh, look, it's Tom or his fat wife, right? <laughs> Over here, and they're gonna be like, Oh, I don't know if I want to hire this chick for the job because she looks like she's gonna be eating donuts more than doing the work. Like, it's <laughs> people, women need to realize that being attractive or trying to be attractive is not just, Oh, I have to be, um, it's a sexist policy, I have to, you know, take the dick from my man at a time, right? It's not just that, it's about getting respect in the world mm -hmm. because. I think any woman who's had one of those extreme before afters like I have where you lose 100 pounds and you like, you know, do start taking care of yourself, you'll realize that people in general treat you a hell of a lot better and you get a hell of a lot more opportunities when you look like you put effort in compared to just being like, hey, I'm going to get fit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it, but even, even apart from the physical stuff, like just any kind of boundary stuff, he said he's just lost all his power and it if he wants to like put his foot down on any of that, any of that stuff and like call her bluff, he's like, I lose my house. I lose, I lose half my shit and I fuck up the kid's life. And he's like, I, I love my son too much. He's like, I'm stuck now. If, you know, if I were to ever do the long-term thing, like I, I, I don't think I would get into an official marriage contract. That's what Jeff and I are having. Cause we've been talking about it. What we, what basically I propose proposing for him, Basically, all I want is like a small, like a, like a little, like six hundred, seven hundred dollar little ring, and a party. It, it, not a big one because I don't have any fucking friends. I don't have a lot of family members that I want there, but just like a nice little thing with some cake or whatever, and then just to change my last name, and that's it. I don't want like I don't want to like sign anything. I don't want to have half this, half ours, half whatever. Because at the end of the day, like worst comes to worst, like there's. There, you don't really have to get married in order to like take something from a man, unfortunately, right? There's always child support and shit like yeah. that, right? But that's not my aim is to take something from him. Like I plan on staying with him. But that that's something that I think women should just consider because I think there's like a lot of emphasis on, oh, let's just have a nice big party and let's just <laughs> wear a nice little dress. You can have all that shit but not get into a contract where you might potentially – ruin someone's life. If anything, I think that's even better because then when, you know, like the tax returns come or whatever, like it's going to be a lot easier to file taxes. Oh, yeah. A lot easier to just handle shit. Yeah, I think I think the contract just puts a lot of 
unnecessary pressures and a lot of unnecessary bullshit into the whole thing. It's kind of like if you if you turn a rotation girl into a official girlfriend, now all of a sudden you're like wondering what she's doing and like she's wondering what you're doing and you start trying to control each other or like you get jealous if like someone talks to them at the club in front of you and they or if they flirt to, in front of you to anyone or like there, there's so much restrictive stuff that comes in and kind of erodes all the positive parts of the relationship when everything was perfectly fine before and then you introduce this like official label and it, it gets fucked up on both sides or you introduce the marriage contract or the marriage label and now there's all these like rules and pressures and new considerations and people have positions of power against each other and everything like that so yeah i'm not into that whole that yeah. whole thing it just seems complicated and then and then that just like gives like then like for me too it's it's not just about you know ruining or whatever because who knows like in the future i may get into an accident and i may become psycho or something like that that's like my main fear because you know because <laughs> women can be very emotional and i yeah. you know after my traumatic experiences at home, like I could be fucking crazy. So the last thing I'd want to do is just like ruin it. But also like people need to realize is that kids also know what's going on. Like my mom didn't marry my dad, for example, but she she did a lot of like she fucked him up. Like yeah. she 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 and him got into like a like a fight because sometimes like people will you know like how people get physical yeah and they put him in jail but they didn't put her in jail when she was the one who instigated it and she then she was able to have me and then she started beating on me yeah. so it was like oh they assumed my dad was like you know the culprit behind abuse when really she kind of was that person but so the kids can see the abuse that happens and people who don't love each other stay together so. Yeah, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. Is, is this going too slow? No. No, this is fine. Okay, on my end, it's just vibing. So. It looks no, it looks fine here. Um, where I like the the hour mark. Is there any um, other? Did you have any other like key things to discuss? I don't. Do you? I'm sorry. I ramble on. Um. I'm trying to think. Just like for like moving forward. So, so you're you're focused on a bunch of artistic projects. Yes, so I've been working actually with somebody else in the community right now. His name is Allie, and he drew pictures for my last book, which has to do with my life and how I got into the game. And I'm writing the second one, too, um, and he's also illustrating that. So um, I, I have all the pictures done, and I actually have ordered some panels to go on our wall here. Uh -huh. so, Wait, what's the second book about? Um, the second one has to do with, was because the whole entire book happened, the one that I wrote happened in Massachusetts, because that's okay. where uh, Jeff and I are originally from. Then we came over to California. So it's from the time where we arrived and we were struggling. I mean, we were struggling here. Um, we first arrived in LA till the point where I lost my third job in a row. So not, I was not very good with office work or anything like that. I was just trying to make ends meet, and then I just started going into entertainment. So that's, that's oh, sorry. yeah. So that's what I'm doing. But mostly, what I'm also trying to do is I'm also thinking because I feel like a lot of our media here and pickup has been shut off. I know the Playing with Fire group got shut down. I know you know they've been they fucked around with my channel. Um, I was talking to my photographer and we're thinking about maybe making like um, like a seduction magazine where we can uh, get women and we can have them like take photos and maybe give their own perspectives about being approached by guys and we can hear from the community and have them give their own opinions or even putting in comics or having people that are local here, you know, in our community to make art, they can submit stuff. Are you talking about like a virtual magazine? Like a virtual magazine that anybody can access. That'd be cool. Yeah, it, it is annoying all the censorship. Like, um, I, you know, I, you heard why Alex's group got shut down? Uh, because of Vice, right? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're trying to do a hit piece on him, and like right after the woman contacted him, like his, his whole group goes down, and then um, most of the the group leaders and the, the different coaches and stuff are just getting constantly banned. Like their profiles are getting constantly banned, and when they try to make a new profile, they get banned. People are just doing like these targeted mass reporting. Like I'm getting posts reported from like two, three years ago. Like they're just really digging to find anything they can to report. And so a lot of these group owners are just like giving up. Like 
<clears throat> like some of the guys like can't like Alex can't even get back on Facebook. Like he's tried making a whole bunch of different aliases and different um, IP addresses too. Group. Yeah, I think so. Well, like once once they find out like he has a new group resurging, they just report it for all these. They just have a whole bunch of people reporting it. Um, it's really too bad. Um, and what, your your channel, you had people to kind of target you as well, right? Um, what happened with my situation was actually super fucked up. Um, I found out that I was a target for these people. They had a radio show. It was a feminist radio show. And they they found a video, and the girl says that it was of her, but it wasn't of her at all. I know because I know the girl who I hooked up with, and it wasn't her at all. So I asked them to provide some sort of evidence because I... When I went on a date with this particular couple, this this because uh, uh, this couple basically like wanted to take pictures with me and do stuff, and actually nothing came out of the date. It wasn't like a bedroom infield. It was a me talking in a club yeah. to to two people and then moving on really. Um, but the girl was like, "Oh, we met on Tinder. We met on Tinder." I said, "I did not meet these people who are in the video on Tinder." Do you have like a phone number? And I'm helping them. I'm giving them clues to like my phone number. I'm giving them clues to my real name. I'm helping, you know, helping them say, is this you really? Because if it is you, I'll take it down. But if it's not you, then you're just starting shit. And they're like, no, it's us. It's us. Like, we you know it. I said, do you, they said, oh, we, we, we contacted Tinder and we found your backlogs. I said, can you send them to me? Because then I'll just take it down. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. Just be, hi, how are you? Because my face will be on there. The name will be on there, whatever. They couldn't even provide that. So what they did was the girl sent me a, a screenshot of it on Facebook where she said that she made up a story that it was um, that we had met before and that she was going to have her followers take it off. So she said something like, oh, me and this girl met on Tinder years ago and stuff like that. And this girl, like, had, like, some big, like, like it was, like, a mixtape following. They had, like, about, like, maybe, like, a thousand followers on Facebook or something or, or some bullshit. And then they started attacking my Instagram and they started attacking my YouTube channel by mass reporting, which is why I got taken down. But when I went on Tinder later on, my profile, even though they found me and reported me to Tinder and were threatening all this legal stuff, my profile was still up. Like there, like you would have thought Tinder would have been like, "Hey, you're banned," right? Mm -hmm. So I was still allowed to use that. Um, I was able to access my YouTube channel, and what I found out was that what I did was it, they didn't even have proof that it was that they. The YouTube took down my channel because. It was mass reporting because of haters, but they also looked at the material and they're like, "Oh, it's too sexual. There weren't enough like." Because I had I had talked to them about it just to see, and they were like, "Yeah, like we weren't going to take the video down because the person said it was who they were. It was because of there was like a lot of you know like there's Teddy's hair and you know some making out. It was a little sexy, so we had to take it down. And then when I had contacted um, Instagram about it, they they never got back to me as to why." why they took down the account at all. Um, but my other, I made a new Instagram, which actually built up followers a lot more quickly. Um, but it was it was like a big thing. And then I was, um, I was talking to somebody, I guess, like I was just bitching about it on Tumblr. And somebody said, I think you need to listen to this, this like radio show because they're coming on on this time. So I started listening and they basically were talking about how they had set the whole thing up how um, they had heard about me from like from like a while ago just by looking up like lesbian dating tips or something like that, and they thought that what I was doing was scandalous and bad. Now, mind you, a lot of the girls that were on the on the channel and stuff like that actually had known about some of the videos that I had made before and had consented to some of the videos being up. So my most popular video, which was about three million views, like I swear it was like the hottest. Um, Latina girl I ever, you know, slept with. She had like, long hair, big booty, like whatever, right? Her video got 3 million views. And this girl, I, I spoke to her and she saw my channel because I had put up a, a clip of us talking before. And she basically called me up and said, I like what you're doing. Let's finish what you started. I was shocked too. I was like, oh, okay. And she set the camera. That's why the camera angle was like different and stuff like that. So these people basically came in. I've never met them. 
I can send you a picture to the, a picture of them too because that's why I was like it was like such a bizarre experience because I would have never even bothered talking to people who were like in this kind of caliber. And so basically, what they did was they just kind of like set me up to just to just have stuff down. So yeah, the whole thing I, it's it's really fucked now. It's like um, yeah. I've had groups and, and profiles removed. My Instagram got banned. My Instagram got banned during my Sopot talk where I, I had it up on the screen and I was talking shit about RST Tyler and I was talking shit about um, even Social Prime who was at the event because I didn't agree with the direction they were going in. And I had my Instagram up on a slide and it went down like after that slide, which means a whole bunch of people went on and reported it like during my talk. That's so that these, these uh, social media sites, what I've seen time and time again is that they just allow for any anybody really if they have enough following or enough manpower to just target report you and almost no one's following guidelines the guidelines are so like loose and broad and stuff like that that they can just anyone can take down anyone's shit pretty much the next thing that i think that we as a community need to be very aware of and we need to start looking into is paypal because i also um have been banned from paypal um because of mass reporting so that could also affect our income, and that's a problem to me. You feel so? Um, I didn't have much money in PayPal. I had about maybe like forty bucks left, but I still can't get those forty bucks back because PayPal was like, "Oh, you were using our services inappropriately." I've never sold anything, by the way. Like I've never like as in I've never sold like anything that was like pornographic related or anything. Like the yeah. most I would probably do is, "Oh, do you want to have a talk about your problems?" or Oh, like, you know, like just like little things or oh, like transferring money to pay for your service, for example. Like that's all I used it for. And they were just like, oh, it says lesbian pickup artist on the email. No. And I was just like, I've never done anything with it other than having that be the email. Yeah. So, you know, we got to, we got to, we got to watch out a little bit. For, so I w- yeah. I want to have like, um, like a forum that's like just on a private server and, Instead of having all these stupid pickup forms on Facebook, just have a form that's on a private server that people just routinely use, even though Facebook's easier platform because people are on there all the time. If we put everyone onto a private forum, then it's all unified and you have like threads more categorized. And Facebook, it's just like whatever it happens, we bump to the top is the only thing that you see really in a group. But yeah, I don't, I don't know the best way of doing it, but if there was a way to just get everyone onto a, one big external forum that can't be reported and removed, that would be the best, I think. I had one like four years ago and I had to take it down, but. You know, and I think that's, um, the only other place that I can think of for, for people to do this would be to start looking at the adult industry because a lot of people from like the National Rifle Association and gun owners have also faced similar stuff that the pickup community has been going through and they're able to basically use porn tube or porn hub or so as their own personal YouTube, if that makes sense. And I think that there might be like, a, like there's like sites out there like that, that cater to like adult stars and porn that also could be used for like pickup purposes and, and stuff like that. So, but that's, that's like, that would be like a whole like, ooh, like opening the door up to, okay, now we're on Pornhub, right? Like you can look at titties over here. I, I have a bunch of really good connects in the, the porn industry from going to the adult video thing in Vegas, the AVN. Oh. Book, right like when you go look up porn there's like fuck book like right at the top like hey, maybe we should just make that and just there are our reports yeah <laughs> like, there's no single lonely housewives but hey there's like the lay report right over there i've had i've had guys want me to put like ho- like full fuck videos on on those sites so they can like see my <laughs> sexual techniques and stuff like that <laughs> nobody would ever suspect it because Facebook would be like, well, at least they're not here. And, you know, they're just going to go on fuckbook unless they're looking for lonely single housewives. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah we could, this is probably a good place to, to wrap up. I can put, I can put um, links in the video description to your... You, where's the main outlet you use now to, for your stuff? Is it Tumblr? Uh, I'm using a new YouTube channel, but it's not pickup related. It's going to talk about dating, but it's going to be more like fun stuff so I'll give you that information after though okay. um, and I'll also take the videos that I have here and I'll cut and paste to get rid of the ums or ers or the highlights and I'll just kind of do that like Joe Rogan style like j Rogan talks about his family or you know feminism or you know shit about that okay sounds good 
Yeah, thanks for jumping on. It's really fucking early your time. This is it's like uh, four o'clock my time. But what is it? I work overnight, so this is not. You what? I work overnight. Oh, okay, okay. It's like.